The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's about starting seeds indoors. We'll offer you tips and techniques so you can be successful, as well as growing cool season crops, which you may want to grow and avoid. Our guest is author Jessica Walliser, and all of this starts next. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Hi, Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We are happy that you've decided to take the next hour to join us on the program, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022, uh, a radio app, the TuneIn app, a uh, simple radio app uh, through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the Season 5 tab, in-studio video replay, or podcast. We appreciate you taking time to be with us. If you want to be part of the show and a participation is always welcome, you can do such by emailing us at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail. Dot com, or you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation's Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. ProclamationGoods.com. Now, again, that number, if you want to call you can, and we can't get to you during the show, leave a message. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Well, let's get into the program, and our first topic of discussion is going to be starting seeds indoors, Holly. And this segment is a special segment because it's sponsored by Happy Leaf LED. Yes, Happy Leaf LED is probably made in the USA, a grow light for beginners or advanced indoor gardeners. They have a universal LED recipe. That means you just turn it on and watch your leafy greens, herbs, vegetables, any plant really grow and thrive. It's the anywhere, anytime garden, a professional grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, motors, just plug in and grow. You can find out more by going to happyleafled.com. And uh, if you want to save a little Moolah, you can use coupon code Joey Holly at checkout and you'll get 10% off your order of $90 or more first time customers for that. So you can get a little knocked off and uh, happy. We'll talk more about Happy Leaf here in a moment. Now, many people, um, as we did a uh, couple of uh, videos a while back, uh, not too many weeks ago, but we told people in our video that we would advise them if you've never started seeds or you don't start many seeds this might be the year you want to start as many seeds as possible and why is that well we have um overall supply chain issues We've got a also, lot of problems besides that but we don't have uh, this is only an hour show right also fuel prices blah 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 right uh the labor shortage what and everything else and, and prices were high last year at the garden center for, for certain items absolutely so we are advising people to think about starting plants, their seedlings indoors because of this, which means that possibly your seedlings at the garden center could go up in price quite a bit. Last year, four inch pot, uh, four inch tomato, pepper, uh, romaine lettuce was five forty nine, and I believe that was up almost a full. Uh, this is the no, this is uh, not across the board. This is the one particular independent garden center was up about a dollar from the previous year, 
Because I remember at some point they were like three and a half, and then they now they're at five and a half. And figure this year we're probably talking six and a half to seven a plant. Uh, and people and they sell out every year. So, but you know, you can right. you can start a lot of romaine lettuce plants for seven dollars and fifty cents. Exactly, and that's just it. You have to consider the the return on your investment too, right? So maybe maybe you you don't start seeds every year, and you do rely on the garden center, and you're okay with that. That's fine. You're okay with the price. Yeah. But maybe you're like, well, this is going to be my first year trying this. I'm just going to see how it goes, and. And uh, you decide to start your own seeds, and that becomes a thing for you. Whatever works for you, definitely go with that. But speaking of that, we seeds. Have, yeah, seeds. One thing we want to talk about is how there are a lot of fake seeds or pie in the sky idea of seeds being sold on the internet. Scam and uh, scam seeds. You can go on uh, Marketplace Facebook. You can go on Etsy. You can go on Amazon. And it won't eBay. take oh. e- eBay, and it won't take you long. To find, quote unquote, rare, 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 very few seeds, rare, rare, rare seeds, rainbow this, rainbow that, black rose this. It, it, here's the deal, folks. If you can't, if you can take, let's say it's rainbow strawberries, and there's pictures of rainbow strawberries, there's blue, uh, red, yellow, orange, all these colors and that, that people are trying to sell these, and you type in rainbow strawberries, and the top seed companies in the country, Jung Seeds, and you know, name the top ones uh, that you get them from. If they don't have that seed, and some of these companies have crazy cool seeds, they don't exist. Watermelon that is green on the inside, watermelon that's purple on the inside, they, they don't exist. What the theory was a couple of years ago was that. These are fly-by-night companies, most likely not in the U.S. I saw one the other day. Black roses, rare, rare, rare seeds. Get them now. There is no such thing in nature or in captivity of a black rose. The only type of black rose is a dead rose that's been painted. Well, typically it's something that the the flower the flower uh, industry will spray paint right. or whatever. But they, they do. they've got rose yeah. rainbow roses. You know all these. What the theory was a couple of years ago, and I'm, I, I don't see that it would have changed, is these people are most likely not in the United States, and you say, I want to buy this, and they'll ship it right away because you see the reviews shipped great quick. They've gotten your information, and some people believe that that is part of identific- I- identity theft, is they'll get your information and, and your credit card. And it's just a quick scam, oh, yeah. and they just, want, they just want to make some money. People get these seeds analyzed, and they're rocks, they're sand. They're, they're not really seeds. So Beads. get it from a reputable yeah. seed company, your garden center, junk seeds, somebody that actually has a call center or a customer service line, and it's not somebody that's in a garage that won't exist tomorrow afternoon. When Another you get, thing yeah. we notice is that when you click on the reviews, it doesn't go anywhere. Correct. So it's like, here's this this seed has five stars or four and a half stars, and then you click on the little review link, and it doesn't go anywhere. So you can just be smart about what you're buying. So I'll just talk about lights. Right. So lights. You don't you, have to have lights. No. We grew for many years on a, a, out of a west facing window we would rotate the plants and they did just fine but as we mentioned the happy leaf led is a great light source if you're gonna if you want good seeds if you want good starts and you got to invest the money you can get the el cheapo tube lights at the garden center that only gives a fraction of what the seeds are requiring or you can get the happy leaf invest and and the lights will be good for decades we've had ours for almost 10 years and haven't had a problem with it don't take our word for it uh, you can go online, look at all the Happy Leaf LED uh, videos. A lot of good stuff there. Should we put potting soil or compost as a seed starting mix, or does it matter? It. I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but we've done, we've, we've done both. Right. And especially if you've ever, maybe you purchased compost from in a, in a large quantity, and you bag some up and you keep it for seed save, seed starting. The following spring, that's an option for you. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have a, a cubic yard or however many delivered, you might as well use that compost. And you don't necessarily need a heating mat if you're growing these indoors in your home in a normal house that's 62, 68, uh, let's say seventy five degrees. They're gonna germinate just fine. Uh, expanding peat pellets. These are convenience, but they're yeah. not great. They're convenient. They're cute. They're fun. Kids love them because they're 
magical. They're a pellet of peat moss that is in a netting that when it's hydrated, expands to the size that you purchase. There's multiple different sizes in which you can get. Right. So they're they're fun because they expand. So what you want to keep in mind, though, is that that's just literally peat moss in this little expandable netting. No nutrients. No nutrients. So after a while, you are going to want to fertilize, typically with liquid fertilizer, but it's something to keep in mind. Then also that netting is supposedly biodegradable, but we've po- we've pulled it out of the soil with tomato roots growing through it. Yeah, they don't um, say what decade. Yeah, they don't say exactly. So you want to keep in mind that when you do when you do plant those, you want to remove that netting. Right, and a quarter of the strength of what the liquid fertilizer says on the back of the bottle, and you'd want to start feeding those plants or compost tea about uh, four weeks after you've planted them. They've germinated. They've used all the energy up from the seed coat. Then you want to start feeding them, or you can take the netting off and transplant them into a root maker cell and fill it with potting soil or compost uh, until it's time to take them outside. Now, if it gets your kids excited to start seeds, then by all means, well, it's a great way to this. start the seed. Yeah. It's just not a great way to sustain the seedling until it's time for that six, eight, twelve weeks. Just definitely things to think about. The other thing to think about is the smaller the container, the more you have to water. Mm-hmm. So, if you have something that you are planting in that is the size of a peat pellet or a peat pellet, you will have to water that more frequently because it will dry out more frequently. And you want to start your seeds according to the recommended uh, time frame on the back of the package or many sources online uh, based on your growing zone. You don't want to start tomatoes in February if you're not going to put them out until late May or early June. Uh, Tomatoes, six to eight weeks before your last average frost date. Uh, Lettuce is four weeks. Onions, peppers, leeks are between nine and 12 weeks. There are a lot of good charts, but you want to look for the chart that corresponds with the geographical area and the growing zone in which you are in, because you don't want to get a growing chart from Alabama when you live in North Dakota. It doesn't work out so well. So typically, the your local university extension office has those available, or you just search your zip code and a growing zone for your zip code or seed starting, and you'll find a lot of that online very easily. And when you water... Let's talk about watering. You've got your seeds, you're watering. This is applicable only for if you're not using the peat pellets. You've got a uh, an 18 cell tray, a 32 trail say, a tra- tray, cell tray, 72, whatever you may have. You start your seeds. You have your compost, your potting soil in the thing. You, you start your seeds, and then you water them from the bottom. Capillary action will uh, allow the cells to hydrate. You're in a 10 by 20 flat uh, that container is waterproof, so it holds the water. Once the moisture has u- been sucked up into the cells, you drain off the excess water so you're not allowing those seeds or soil to be in a bog. In order to reduce the amount of watering one may need to do, it all depends on the humidity in your home. Uh, drier air will suck a lot of moisture out of your your seedling uh, cells. But what we found was if you take paper towels, a paper towel and make a complete covering over top of your seed starting cells and then water from the top and let it percolate through the paper towels. After the water has percolated through in about two days, it kind of creates a crust or a mulch and it actually reduces the amount of watering you have to do by quite a lot and actually may save your seedlings prior to germination because you may have forgot to water. And once they begin to germinate, you want to remove that paper towel. But it is handy for, for the mulch aspect, the water aspect. And also, if you are a heavy waterer, that paper towel helps prevent you from watering too much and moving the seeds around or who knows what else. Well, and uh, we hope that that has helped. If you do need specific questions answered in regards to uh, what you need to do in your growing situation, Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com, we can get you the answer to your situation. Uh, talking about another situation, Holly, whether you are a fisherman, f- fishing person, a hunter, a homesteader, or you want some very good seasonings for what you're cooking in your kitchen, Waltons can provide all of that for you, and it ha- they have a discount, and we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from, 
Canning and preserving your fruits and vegetables is great, but what about the meat? At Walton's, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, and even snack sticks that people will like. They have the website meatgistics.com to help educate on the hows and whys of meat processing and a community of almost 15,000 users to help give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. They also have all of the Grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's is everything but the meat. You can use your code GROW22 to save 10% off orders of 50 or more and get free shipping. That's waltonsinc.com, code GROW22. Absolutely, and they have great seasonings and uh, for your meat and what you are cooking in your kitchen. Hang out, stay with us. It's cool season crops is the topic that we're going to discuss next. You're listening to The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Carpenter bees cause costly structural damage to wood siding, decks, doors, eaves, and railings. Our solution is Trapstick from Rescue. It catches carpenter bees all season long. Trapstick uses no pesticides. Carpenter bees are enticed by colors and pattern and get stuck on the adhesive. Save your wood structures from damage from carpenter bees with Trapstick from from Rescue, made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly and Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at CarpenterBeeControl.com. That's CarpenterBeeControl.com. Protect your outdoor furniture, fire pits, grills, and more with custom covers from CoversAndAll.com. Springtime means you don't know what the weather is going to do. Rain, sun, snow, ice, maybe everything in 48 hours. Covers and All's durable custom covers protects against it all. They've got a bunch of fabrics to choose from, and each one can be customized to fit any style, size, or shape to keep your outdoor furniture looking brand new year-round. Visit them at CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN. 25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit DrZymes.com forward slash garden talk. Growing food safely without the use of chemicals is best, but some organic products Products can clog the stomata of plants. The stomata are miniature openings found in the epidermis of the leaves, stem, and other parts and other plant organs. Using an oil-based product can prevent the stomata from allowing gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, and oxygen to diffuse into and out of the internal tissues of the plant. The amazing Dr. Zyme Eliminator protects your plants without clogging the stomata. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the time of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Take the guesswork out of composting with Hot Bin Composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Thanks for listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, 
Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Big hour here, a lot of information getting thrown at you. Uh, appreciate you taking time to be with us. Holly, uh, we're getting uh, getting close, getting close to when we can get out in the garden in most parts of the uh, northern areas here. And many people may have struggled last year with watering. And Tree Diaper can solve that equation for you. You can take the guesswork out of using out of watering by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that will stabilize soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releasing it when plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from when you water or when it rains and slowly releases the water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're the first time gardener or an advance, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find all the sizes and options they have available at TreeDiaper.com. They'll keep your plants happy. That's TreeDiaper.com. Got a problem with overwatering or underwatering? Tree Diaper takes the guesswork out of it. TreeDiaper.com. Well, we're going to talk about cool weather crops here. And this is a challenge for many gardeners because cool weather crops have the tendency to bolt or go to seed or create that flower, grow very fast vertically and create a flower head and then the plant is no longer edible. It's very bitter. So what what are some things we need to know? Well, one thing you want to consider is possibly what might do better where you are um, in fall versus spring. So, f- for example, some, some of our foolproof spring crops that we grow that are cool weather are lettuce, peas, radishes, and a lot of times spinach. Mm-hmm. But maybe for you, some of those are be something that you might want to do in the fall. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that um, you can always try again in the fall <laughs> if, they right. don't, if they don't do well. Partial shade mm-hmm. is another an option because these plants, though they will tolerate full sun, when that full sun becomes that, that time of the year when it goes from 40 to 70, in a matter of a few hours or one or two days, that shocks these plant system, and they and the days get longer. They have the internal clock going. Time to reproduce seeds. I'm done growing. Don't care if you're eating me. I got to make seeds, and that's what happens. Exactly, and that's that's exactly what happens. And cilantro, forget it. Yeah, you, uh, cilantro. Uh, well, um, well, a lot of people will have issues with mm-hmm. that especially once solstice comes and it's the longest day of the year. But that's something you can grow in your, your kitchen, yes. like a window in your home year round. And it's nice to grow because it is it is something that and is it's enjoyable. way, way cheaper. Right. It is, it is way cheaper. And it's you, it's kind of uh, climate day, daylight controlled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got a video. If you go to our parent website, uh, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and search for Growing cilantro year-round. We've got a really in, in short instructional video how you can grow it in party cups in your window on a rotating basis all year long and save you a lot of money and have a lot of good fresh cilantro for you. Another another green that a lot of people will grow in the cool weather is pak choy or bok choy, any type of Asian green. And we've done it before. We've It's been a, a gamble sometimes. But that is fun to grow in a cool weather uh, time. Uh, we talked about this uh, last week, turnips and rutabagas being, uh, we had a question that had come in asking if they could grow rutabagas in the spring as they had always heard uh, that it was a fall crop. And you certainly can do that. Rutabagas take 90 days, turnips take 60 days. But the problem, again, we run into is the day length and the we we did it like six years in a row and we got one crop out of six that was uh, they didn't go to seed. Uh, There's a lot of contributing factors to, you know, hydration and and partial shade versus full sun and the temperatures in general um, is uh, part of the factors on that. And people will grow. Let's people will think, you know, cooler name the cool weather crops, brassicas. Cauliflower, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, kale, kohlrabi, 
Now, the, some of those do not go to bolt at all. Like Brussels sprouts, they we plant them as soon as we can get them in the ground, and they will set and grow until freeze. Kale too. Kale too. Yeah. Um, even cabbage. And and yeah. uh, and bro- and uh, kohlrabi. None of them seem to us ever go to bolt because of stress. Not saying they can't. But they are biannuals, meaning that they would go to seed the second year if left alone in the ground. Right. And I, I wouldn't necessarily categorize them as, I mean, they are cool weather crops. But typically, a lot of times when you're thinking about cool weather crops, you're thinking of like a seasonal thing where it's something that A tender is, green. Yeah, like a tender green. You're not going to be growing them the whole length of your season. Right. This is something you're going to grow in the spring or the fall as opposed to those other um crops they're going to take that whole time the to 90 grow. 120 days 130 and 140 days that's another thing is a lot of times we get questions about brussels sprouts mm-hmm. where it's like is this done growing and it's like no you you know it's july and it's like no you still have a couple more months till you till you're going to want to harvest it right and mulching can make a very big difference in this category when you are planting these sensitive uh, somewhat, some people may say heat sensitive plants. Uh, it's day length sensitive as well by mulching them, whether it's by straw or shredded leaves or some type of chemical free seed free grass clippings, due to the fact that mulching soil in general can reduce the soil temperature between five and three and five degrees. Now, you may not think that's a, a big, you know, big benefit. But if it's 80 degrees outside and you can cool that temperature of the soil at root zone down to 77 to 75, that's, you know, there's borderline stuff there where plants will sustain themselves and not go to bolt wherever that sweet spot is. And it also retains moisture, in some instances suppresses weeds, and uh, uh, keeps the soil healthier. We see in nature, except for deserts, that when you allow nature to take care of itself, it covers its it covers the soil everywhere. So you might now, we want to mimic nature. One thing to mention is the red the red, rom, was it the red yes. romaine that that a lot of times when these plants, especially the lettuce, go to bolt, they become bitter and not very tasty. The red romaine seemed to hold out a couple of weeks longer. Yeah. And with the romaine lettuce, um, we find this that you take a romaine lettuce leaf that is bitter. The bitterness is contained primarily in the veins of the of the leaf. There's a central vein that runs from tip to stalk. If you take a few extra minutes to do this, and I know it's you know it's not as convenient, but you can utilize most of the plant throughout the even when it's going to bolt. You take and you cut that central vein out, toss it in the compost, and then you are left with the leaves, and those taste just as crisp and uh, mild as a as what you would think lettuce is. It's when you bite in that central vein and you get that the juices that uh, that bitterness. That's when things go bad. But if you just cut that central vein out, you can get your romaine lettuce, though it takes a little bit longer to prepare, to last much longer into the season. You don't waste essentially as much as you may be doing right now. And sometimes you can trick your plants when it comes to the spring into solstice. So you, if you plant them, as I mentioned, like a, a shadier area, less daylight, you can, um, you can sometimes get more yield out of them. Or if say you planted them in a bucket or something, you can move that around to keep the shade on it. So growing cool weather crops, not saying it's bad. The key to a lot of this is the weather. You want to get them in the ground as soon as possible, but also as soon as possible can mean really nice this week, frigid snow blizzard next week, and then you have to do, you know, like a frost cloth or start over. Another thing, if you are really jazzed about gardening, especially after winter, and you're like, I just want one successful crop. And if, rad- you, and if you're listening to the show, you probably are. <laughs> exactly. Radishes are probably your go-to. Mm-hmm. They take 30 days. If you get a hard frost, and it's may- maybe you plant them a little bit too early, you get a hard frost, and you're not sure if your radishes are going to do well, toss some more seeds in the ground. Right. Go because out. Because they're Go pretty, ahead. yeah, they're pretty uh, foolproof. Go out right now. And take wherever you plan to, to plant radishes, whether there's snow on the ground or not, just take a handful, throw in the garden. They will, and if you want to, take a rake and just, just scat, scratch them in. They will 
explode when the time is right and you will have more radishes than you know what to do with and you didn't have to plant them because you just threw them in the snow. If you just throw them in the snow and it'll melt down, it'll be great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another thing that's not so great, Holly, is uh, as the weather warms up here in the spring, uh, you want to enjoy your yard and your garden, but you don't want to enjoy it with the Japanese beetles and the grubs. No, spring is just right around the corner. You know, there's all sorts of uh, Japanese beetles that we deal with, um, you know, midsummer, we're, and they and, are and, and they used to not be this far north. We're up in uh, you know, southeast Wisconsin. For mm -hmm. those who are not familiar where the show originates from, ten years ago. If somebody said I saw a Japanese beetle, you said they were lying because it didn't exist. I'm from Southern Illinois. They've been there for decades, and now everybody's got them. They've, they've migrated up here. Yeah, they, they don't mess around. So you got to keep that in mind. You don't want to be sharing your yard with, with those uh, unfriendly guests. Grub gone can be applied to turf, garden, or ornament, ornamentals to control those grubs and lessen the impact that those beetles have on your yard this summer. Easy to apply with a commercial spreader or irrigate right into the soil. Biologically specifically targets grubs and beetle invaders without harming those beneficial insects we all want in our garden, such as bee, bees, ladybugs, and butterflies. And it's it's the only non-chemical BT, the only non-chemical that works. Uh, you can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's phylumbioproducts.com. Use code GARDENTALK10 to save 10% off your orders. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. Hang out. Our good friend and author, Jessica Walliser, will be with us right after this. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now, 1-800-927-SHOW. Straw bale gardening is all the rage. Get your bale started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bale Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bale gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and Bacillus bacteria, in addition to the fertilizer itself, produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops. Start with the best to get the best, traditional or organic formula. Take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bale. Go to bellbuster.com to find out more. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care, and we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on exit backpack sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. 
Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomingeasyplants.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. Happy to have you on the program. Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Jessica Walliser is an, uh, is an author, gardener, blogger, columnist, and all-around horticultural and botanical enthusiast. She is the author of several gardening books, including an updated edition of Attracting Beneficial Bugs to Your Garden, which was released earlier this year. She lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with her family. Welcome to the program, Jessica. Thank you so much for the invitation, Holly and Joey. It's my pleasure to join you. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day. And, and we, we, we're always excited when the mail comes and we see you've got a new book out because uh, it always comes right to the house and we appreciate that. Um, well, well, let's start with this question here. How can one deal with weeds? Uh, especially in a small area, that, that's the nemesis of many gardeners that they quit because they can't figure out what they're doing wrong because the weeds keep coming. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a, a, a multi, I, I think there's multiple reasons why you could end up with a lot of weeds. Um, some of it, I think, is the gardener's fault. And some of it, I think, is sort of the, the fault of the environment. Um, I certainly like to garden in a way that doesn't leave much room for weeds um, and shades out the soil. Uh, as you know, weed seeds need light to germinate, most of them. And so when we plant our vegetable gardens, fairly densely that blocks light from reaching the soil surface and really cuts down on weed seed germination. Um, that's one reason. The other reason I think is, is people um, are sometimes, you know, tilling and disturbing their soil when it doesn't really need to be tilled and disturbed. And when that happens, you bring weed seeds that were once buried way down deep in the profile of the soil up to the surface where they can quickly germinate. So rather than tilling so much, I think it's a much better idea to get some mulch on top to further bury those seeds instead of rise them up to the surface, we're going to bury them down deeper. So a layer of shredded leaves or straw or, uh, you know, a thick layer of high quality finished compost, all of those serve as a really nice layer of mulch for the vegetable garden that can help limit weeds. Well, to follow up questions on that, now correct me, some seeds can lay dormant for over 80 years. Is, is this an accurate uh, time frame? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that that's the exact time, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if that was and, the exact time. And where time. does the, I have to till my garden, where does that mindset come from? Is that just my parents did it, my grandparents did it, so that must mean I need to do it? Is that Absolutely. Okay. Abs uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's just sort of like so ingrained in us that we have to go out with a tiller and or a shovel and turn over the soil every spring. Uh, when there's so much fabulous new research that has come out in the last probably decade or two decades that, that talk about leaving the, the network of fungal hyphae and good critters that live in the soil, leaving that network intact um, and don't disturb it. And that will enable us to be better gardeners. It enables our plants to better access nutrients out of the soil. Um, and of course, it keeps those weed seeds buried down deep. Most definitely. And I think it definitely is something that um, is kind of an idea that's passed down from generation to generation. And good that we are working past that. Now, not everyone has access to garden space in full sun. What are some of your favorite mid light, uh, mid light daylight vegetables to grow? Uh, yeah, I think if you don't have a lot of sun, you know, a lot of people kind of get bummed when they don't have a lot of sun, right? And they want to, they want to grow a good vegetable crop. But, and I think it's, 
it, you have to put it all in perspective, right? So yeah, you're probably not going to get to grow really prolific tomato and pepper plants because they require a lot of sun, but there are certainly enough crops that you can grow that will tolerate partial shade. Um, pretty much any of the greens like lettuces and kales and mazunas and spinach, you know, all of those edible greens do fine in, in partial shade um, without any problems whatsoever. Uh, a lot of the root crops will also do decently well in those conditions. So that would be like your beets and your turnips and carrots and radishes and things like that. Um, they do, you know, pretty well as well in those conditions. Um, to some extent, the brassicas or coal crops, which would be like your broccoli and cabbage, um, you know, in fact, they, I actually prefer to grow them in the shade and the heat of the summer, because especially if you live in a really warm climate, they don't do so well in really hot weather and they prefer to be in the shade in the afternoon when, you know, high summer arrives and weather gets really warm. So they're a good crop. You can even grow those in the middle of summer if you have shady conditions. So lots of ways to make do with what you have. Well, let's talk about your new book. It's an updated edition of Attracting Beneficial Bugs to Your Garden. What's new and different about it? And what are some uh, things that uh, bring interest that our listeners would be encouraged to go get a copy? Sure. So the original book came out in 2014 um, and uh, this new edition just came out now. And when we were talking about updating the book, you know, th there's a lot of research. It's a research based book. It looks a lot at sort of the um, not only the gardening research, but also the entomological or bug research that's out there. And of course, you and I know, I mean, that that changes so quickly, right? So I wanted to make sure we had some new information in there. Um, and also what I discovered in going out and talking and giving lectures and classes about this topic of attracting beneficial insects was that um, people weren't using the book in the way that I thought they would be using the book. So in my head, when I originally wrote the book, I thought, okay, well, people are going to read this. They're going to be really interested to sort of build this dedicated insectary border where they were creating this whole separate garden that was, you know, filled with plants that would attract these wonderful insects that would help them control pests. And so there was, you know, a big section in the book dedicated to how to do that. But what I found in talking with people and getting lots of feedback on the book and, uh, and on the, those talks that I give um, was that the people weren't necessarily interested in creating a whole new dedicated garden space just for bugs. Instead, what they wanted to do is they wanted to know what they can do to the garden that they already have. How can they modify that habitat um, and that garden to make it more welcoming for these wonderful, good pest eating bugs. And so I actually removed a chunk of the book that dealt with how to create a dedicated insectary border and instead really focused on the techniques that you can use to make your existing space even better for the bugs. Great. So we are talking with Jessica Walliser. She's an author, gardener, blogger, columnist, and all around horticultural enthusiast. So what are some well-known good bugs most people would have in their garden? And how can more of those good bugs be attracted to their garden? Sure. So I would say probably the cover girl of beneficial insects, so to, so to speak, would be the ladybug. Because um, most people are familiar with ladybugs. You know, we kind of can recognize them from the time we're a year or two old as a little kid. Um, but we maybe don't realize how truly beneficial they are for the garden. They eat a lot of different soft-bodied pests as both larvae and adults. Uh, but they're not the only ones. There's literally literally tens of thousands of other species of beneficial insects, whether it's uh, the many species of parasitic wasps that help prey upon different caterpillars and true bugs in the garden, or um, lacewings whose larvae consume a lot of aphids and, and whitefly nymphs in our garden, uh, to things like spiders and big-eyed bugs and damsel bugs, uh, and even dragonflies and, believe it or not, fireflies, which are predaceous in their larval stage. So there's a ton of good bugs that exist in our gardens that we come across every day, but we might not really realize the good work that they're doing for us and the number of pests that they're actually controlling. Um, and there's a lot of things that gardeners can do to help create a habitat that really is welcoming from that, uh, for them, from, you know, 
making sure that you actually have some pests for them to eat. You don't want your garden to be a sterile environment with no pests because without pests, these good bugs wouldn't have a reason to stick around. Um, so that's number one. Number two would be to plant a lot of flowering plants in and around your vegetable garden, in particular members of the carrot family, which would be things like dill and fennel um, and, uh, you know, angelica and zizia and, and cilantro and letting those plants flower, which are wonderful sources of nectar and pollen for beneficial insects. So get those right there in your vegetable garden. Um, and then of course, you know, providing them with as much habitat as possible, you know, safety, a safe space without use of herbicides and pesticides that could potentially harm them. Um, so stop using all that stuff and instead foster and encourage these good bugs who are going to do the good work of helping you control pests. And for people who are not may not know what bug is what, you've wrote a book about good bugs, bad bugs that help identify what they're looking at and may not need to kill it. I did, yeah. So that sort of the, that bug that book, uh, excuse me, goes kind of hand in hand with this book, and that that book focuses, you know, good bug, bad bug focuses a lot on the pests and how to identify them. But there's also actually some profiles of some good bugs in there as well, so that you can tell the the bad guys from the good guys. So really, a, a good arsenal, I think, would be to have both books in your back pocket, uh, or at least on your reference shelf, so that you can identify pretty much, you know, any critter that you come across in your garden and you're not sure whether they're good or bad. And I think a lot of people go into the garden and see a bug and it looks scary. So it must mean it's bad and I got to kill it. And I, I think that the mindset is very different because there's really weird looking bugs that are really beneficial to the garden. Yeah, it, it's a shame that it's that way, isn't it? That we almost go into this sort of primal panic mode when we see an insect in the garden. And what I think a lot of gardeners don't realize is that of the million or so identified insect species on the planet, less than 1% of those have been classified as known agricultural or human pests. So it's actually a really small percentage of the bugs that we come across in our garden that are proven to be harmful. Um, most of them are not. So I think we should go into the garden assuming that the bugs that we're finding are not harmful until proven otherwise. Uh, but instead we tend to go in there with the opposite as in all bugs are bad. So, but I do think, you know, probably again in the last decade or so that attitude is really changing. I think gardeners are realizing the worth of all of these cool pollinators and all of these cool beneficial insects. And we're starting to take heed of uh, the fact that so many of them are good. And uh, before we let you get out of here, let's talk about watering. We've got some companies that sponsor products for hydrating your raised beds or, or gar containers or garden. What are some techniques that you use during the peak of the summer to keep those uh, containers hydrated so you don't walk out and find that your tomato plant is already cooked for you? Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned containers specifically and, uh, I, you know, I, I'm known for my bugs, right. And, and appreciating the bugs, but I also am a heck of a container gardener. I have about 50 to 60 containers that I grow every year on my patio and in various places around my property. I grow a lot of tropical plants, a lot of vegetables in pots as well. And keeping them well waters is, watered is absolutely essential. And one of the things I tell people to avoid all the time is a method I call the splash and dash which is basically where you're you're just splashing water on the leaves and maybe a little bit on the soil surface and then you're moving on to the next pot. And that's not an effective way to water a container garden. You really wanna target the application of that water directly to the soil and the root zone of the plant. You wanna let it thoroughly and deeply saturate into that soil until it runs out the hole in the bottom and then repeat that two or three times. And that's really how you get that good, thorough, deep watering that plants really need. Yeah. And whenever a pot or a container or a grow bag is completely dry, you, people are not aware of how long and how much water it takes to get that thing back hydrated to a operating uh, level. Exactly. And it's repeating it. So like in my big pots that I have that hold like 20, 30 gallons of potting mix, I will hold the hose on the base of the plant on the soil surface for probably, you know, a good 30 to 45 seconds. And then I'll do the next pot and then I'll go back to that one. So I will go back three and four times to each container and hold that hose on there for a good 30 to 40 seconds to really make sure that it gets thoroughly soaked. Well, Jessica, we really enjoyed having you on the program. 
um, we, we just for our listeners, how can they find out more about you, find your books and all of your great information? Sure. Thanks, Holly. Um, they can always find me on my website, which is SavvyGardening.com, S-A-V-V-Y, Gardening.com. Um, and lots of information there for gardeners that they might find handy, including information on things like watering and good bugs and growing vegetables in containers and all the things that we talked about today. Well, Jessica, we thank you for your time that you've offered, Holly, myself, and all of our listeners, and, and thank you for that. It's always a pleasure to join you guys. Thanks so much for the invitation. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's time for your questions, our answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Are you bugged by bugs? You need naturally green products. No more bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA. No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, roaches, and ants, and more. No Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Visit natgreenproducts.com. You can enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Introducing the Johnny Apple Seed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree, grafted from the last known surviving tree planted by the real Johnny Apple Seed. The Johnny Apple Seed Authentic Algeo Apple Tree was shepherded through nearly 200 years of American history by a family of rural Ohio farmers. Now you can grow this one of a kind heirloom tree right in your own backyard. Order your tree today at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Goodbye biting bugs and plant invaders. No More Bugs by Naturally Green Products is your answer. A product pioneered by the USDA and 12 years in business, No More Bugs has been a favorite by consumers across the country. More than a repellent, it is safe for you, your plants, pets, and home. Visit natgreenproducts.com and enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons, their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit Rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's Rootmaker.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush, conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. A lot of information this hour as we provide every show. 
Well, it's time for your questions are answers. If you've got a question, you can certainly submit that over to us, uh, two different avenues uh, of your choosing. You can send us via email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. If it's a uh, question in regards to uh, providing a photograph, if you can do that, uh, we'll make the identification and the solution much more easier for us uh, and um, help you out on that. Uh, you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods uh, at 1-800-927-SHOW if you'd like to do that. Holly, what is Proclamation Goods? Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set as a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook with more with less. If you care about your health and strive for more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamations Goods is for you. Simply supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. That's Proclamation Goods. Well, we had a number of questions come in this week. We'll see what we can do. Uh, push through to the top of the hour. Holly, we'll start with the question you had about dog feces. Yeah, I just started composting. I, I just recently bought a home and I'm composting and I, I do have a dog and I was wondering, can I put their my dog's waste in my compost for my, my vegetables? Uh, vegetables, no. Uh, if you're going to separately compost dog waste for, let's say, shrubs or around uh, trees, ornamental trees, or uh, just throw on the lawn, that's okay. The problem with the vegetable usage is dogs can uh, have pathogens uh, in their feces, and that is not necessarily safe for vegetable con uh, for vegetables because that can get on the vegetables and, and uh, make you sick and cause a whole lot of problems. So for vegetables, no. Uh, it's not recommended for or safe to do such, but if it's just for uh, regular stuff, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, not a problem. Uh, let's see, Holly. Do seeds expire? Um, yes, <laughs> they do. They yes. Do. Um, essentially, yeah. So they do last to their expiration date, whatever it says on the package. Well, that's based on the manufacturer, and I don't know all the legalities, but... If the seed is designed to be sold in current year, they have until X time during current year to sell them. Otherwise, they have to dispose of them or give them away because they can't carry them over to the next calendar year. Right. I, I don't understand all that, but from a manufacturer, from a seed company, um, they have to put an exp exp uh, expiration date on it. But if but you've got them... Right. So if you have them, it doesn't mean that if exactly a year from... You know, January 2023, these seeds are going to stop working, stop growing. That's, that's not the case. Um, there are some, there's kind of some rules of thumb. If you keep them in a cool, dry place, such as a closet, uh, crisper of a fridge, um, that type of thing, keep them out of direct sunlight, out of heat, the longevity of the viability is much more. You can do a germination test. If you think your seeds are bad, you take 10, put them in a cup of soil, make sure they're hydrated, and you're just waiting to see how many of them actually germinate. You have six germinate, it's 60% germination rate. You're looking for something between 70 and 90, uh, respectively. But if you don't want to get rid of your seeds and you only have 30 or 40% germination, let's say in radishes, plant the whole thing and use them up and do it that way. Kind of some reference, uh, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, tomatoes, kale, eggplant, cucumber, all can last well past five years if taken care of. Um, your short-term crops that don't last very long is leeks, okras, onions, parsnips, rhubarb. Those seeds have a very short one to two year if you're really doing everything right, maybe three on your viability of those seeds so the other thing is is that if you say you find a packet of seeds and you're not sure i mean you can look online but you can also do a germination test and you can just take right. wet paper towel put 10 seeds in there if you want to do seed. the wet paper towel yeah. versus what i said about the, the soil right wet paper like towel yeah quick, yeah you know like i don't want to commit to a soil situation yeah yeah you're just hydrating the seeds and seeing how many of them germinate so uh here's another question holly i have clay soil what are my options well, well, you could just uh, 
<laughs> Good luck to you. Um, I would recommend doing a container situation, raised beds, um, straw bale, something like yeah. that, where you are not digging in into your earth uh, of your your land. Or or you can take and order compost. And simply layer two or three inches of compost over the area in which you intend to garden, not work it in. And it's a time thing. Let it sit there for six, eight, 12 months, a year. Keep adding more compost. And eventually, nature with rain and the insects and the bugs and the worms will drag that stuff down. And it will actually uh, work into the soil in a, in a condition in which you can grow successfully where there once was clay soil. It will migrate to more of a pliable usable soil uh, in your garden. So that's uh, really a, a good way to do it if you have time on your hands. If you don't want to wait that long, the investment, and it is an investment, of raised beds, which what we did for a variety of other reasons, not the clay soil issue, but it really makes the, uh, re it, it re the return on investment is worth it for raised beds. So with that being said, uh, we are out of time and we thank you for yours. Hey, did you miss any portion of the program today? I know you maybe got in and out of the car or uh, walked away from the uh, radio. You can certainly uh, catch the replay of that at our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener .com, under the season six tab at the top of the page, or just send us an email, garden talk radio at gmail.com. We'll send you the link to this program and you can catch up on that and past shows on said website. Hey, tune in next week. Here's what we're going to talk about. Five tips to a better growing season. That'll, that'll be helpful. As well as spring tree care techniques and tips. Our guest is going to be engineer and new author, Victor Zatteray, and we'll answer more of your questions. So until next week for... Holly Baird. I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>